this class uh, we will uh, continue the discussion on the design of computer instruction set. So, so far we have seen the um, uh, how um, what is the format of a uh, computer instruction what are the two parts or two fields of a instruction and how the uh, uh, opcode part the instruction opcode uh, is encoded. And then uh, um, we introduce the reduced set instruction um, computer and what are the uh, the different uh, risk machines so far uh, developed. Now, um, already I mentioned that nowadays almost all the um, high performance computers are the risk machines. So, uh, just to see the what are the basic architecture of risk, uh, some early machines developed based on risk we will see that thing. So, some early risk projects are IBM machine and the Barclay risk 1 and risk 2 machines and Stanford MIPS. So, this class uh, we see the as an example the, the MIPS architecture. So, the MIPS instruction formats that all MIPS instructions are 32 bit long. This is the instructions are 32 bits. The three instruction formats are R type, I type, and J type. So, it supports three different instruction formats. And the different fields are op means operation of the instructions, that means which operation or supported or which operations are currently being uh, executed by the instruction. R S, R T, R B, the three source and destination register specifies. Then shipped amount S H M T is a shipped amount that is a different field kept in MIPS. Another is functi, it selects the variant of operation in the op field. Then address an immediate, that means address offset or immediate value, that means the data or this is some kind of mode of operations, that whether it is the, um, it is the immediate value the is being operated on or the address is given or address offset and from some addresses the data have to be accessed before it operated on. So, these are the different fields that are kept on the early uh, MIPS machine. Now, these are the three type of the instruction format. So, all are of 32 bit long. So, see here this is a, the first type that 6 bits are the op, the operations, which operations. R S R T R D, these are all, every one is of 5 bits, means this 15 bits are for the registers, the source and destination registers. Then this is a shipped amount is again 5 bits and this is a functi, this is a 6 bit. Now, another one, another instruction format is 6 bit is of op, op, op code of op operation field. Then only RSRT 2 registers are kept instead of 3 and these are 5 bit, 5 bit rather immediate value that means 16 bits are kept for immediate. So, here that value is immediate value is can be taken. So, that is why the 16 bit data this is a actually the 16 bit 
data. Now, another one is that this is totally uh, um, the address field based. So, what actually uh, initially we introduced the instruction format is of opcode op field and the address field. So, the third one is the, our, the classical in nature. So, 6 bit opcode that means 2 to the power 6 or 64 such operations are specified and 26 bit address that means 2 to the power 26 locations are available to keep or to store the data to be operated. So, this is the thing. So, this is our our um, in, in the simple instruction format that has two field opcode and address field that this is the instruction uh, the MIPS supports this one. This is some a different type that as if that values are stored on registers the immediate values and that can be taken from this 2 to the power 16 the immediate values can be taken from here and in that way it can be uh, worked out. So, the MIPS instruction layout, these are of standard. So, this is actually taken from the uh, LSBR science USA because this is already implemented. So, what layout they have fixed, they designed, it is taken as it is, it is given as an example. So, this is the I type of instruction. As already we mentioned, they uh, propose three type of instructions format, I type, R type and J type. So, I type means the immediate value type. So, already we have seen that I type is opcode R S R T immediate. So, it encodes uh, loads and stores of bytes, half words, double words and all immediates is R S to R T of immediate. That means, here the operations type is of it has these two type of Uh, RT opcode, RSRT at the source and destination registers and the immediate type. So, opcode, opcode 6 bit Five R T R S five bit five bit and the rest are immediate value. The sixteen bits because total is thirty one bits. Now here the operations are of the two registers, it is a load store type that R S the operations immediate means whatever the immediate value is taken the operation is on the content of these resistors this this is the register value this is the immediate value immediate value and they two are operated and move to the destination registers. So, this is the type of operations the I type. So, this is the I type operations to be performed this is the I type. 
Now, conditional branch instruction RSS register RD unused and jump instru jump register jump and link register R type instructions here that opcode RS RT RD that shift amount SHMT and func. So, register uh, ALU operations is RD RS func RT. So, here the operations is the between three registers it is between three registers that this is R type the operations are rd is rd is rs func rt see these are again two registers content of two registers functions and then it is operated on that uh, it is value is moved to rd function encodes the data path operations uh, add subtract and read write special registers and moves and j type is simple the opcode and offset added to pc so jump and jump and link trap and return from exception so these are the three instruction formats initially proposed by uh, MIPS. <coughs> now, MIPS addressing modes or uh, instruction formats. So, this is called a direct the register. Direct mode the 6 bit opcode is there and the 3 registers RS, RT, RD. So, RS is taken as if the register. Now, immediate immediate means that already uh, uh, we have seen that always the data is the immediate value is operated uh, with the content of RT and then shifted to RS. Then some displacement. So, here see immediate value and the RS register RS RT are registers. So, content of these registers this is being operated and then that particular it gives the address of, of memory. So, this or immediate can be can specify the displacement. So, this is a another facility or some flexibility has kept of this type that I type. Here immediate is not the data, but the immediate gives the uh, as if the offset value the address offset. Now, PC relative that is the program counter and the immediate value and it always gives a memory location and here all instructions are 32 bit wide. Now, how the instruction sets are designed? So, it used general purpose registers with a load store architecture. This is the basic principle of RISC architecture. So, this is the basic principle of RISC architecture is load store. Provide at least 16 general purpose registers plus separate floating point registers. So, it keeps a number of registers. So, 16 general purpose registers and also some floating point registers are kept. It supports basic addressing modes like displacement just now we have seen with an address of size of 12 to 16 bits and the displacement value is taken from the immediate the 16 bit. Immediate size 8 to 16 bits and register deferred 16 bits from immediate displacement all addressing modes apply to all data transfer instructions. It use fixed instruction encoding 
fixed instruction encoding if interested in performance and use variable instruction encoding if interested in code size. So, again it is a flexibility kept normally risk is uh, told that fixed instruction um, encoding, but if needed it has some variable in instruction encoding is also kept if the code size is to be considered. Then it supports these data sizes and types 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit integers and 32 bit and 64 bit IEEE 754 floating point numbers. It supports the simple instructions since they will dominate the number of instructions executed the load, store, add, subtract, move, register to register and shift, compare, equal, compare not equal, branch with a PC relative address at least 8 bits log, jump, call and return. So, it has some other miscellaneous um, instructions, but mainly the main instructions are load store add subtract and shift some compare some branching that means jump type of instructions then uh, call and return aim for a minimalist instruction sets and from there they are selecting a basic instruction set and they are implementing these instruction sets. So, mainly the reduced instruction set the concept comes from here the minimal list of instruction sets that are needed. So, the approach is like that. Now, risk is a five stage execution. Uh, this is already we got told that this is a load store architecture. Now, this five stage are instruction fetch, instruction decode, execute, memory and the write back. What it does instruction fetch it get instruction from, our, from the memory that which instructions to are now uh, is to be executed. So, first it fetches the instruction, then instruction decode register read. So, instruction decode, decode that what is that instruction translate of code into control signals and read registers. As already we have seen one example that every instructions or the opcode field is actually encoded with some binary numbers. So, decoding that binary numbers that which uh, instruction actually it is means the instruction decoding. So, we have done the opcode encoding now the reverse thing will be doing that decoding the instructions seeing the binary numbers assigned to the uh, opcode field. Now, execute this perform ALU operation on the load store addresses branch outcomes that means, whatever instructions uh, is, is supported by MIPS it will be executed by this stage in this stage execute memory memory means this accessing memory if load store and else everyone else ID. Another is a uh, write back. Now, another very uh, unique concept and that is very important thing that pipeline concept now has come into picture. Now, concept is actually the overlapping or, or overlapping execution of instruction or we can tell the uh, utilization of overlap execution of instructions is called the concept of pipeline. What is that? The start instruction on every cycle, the new instruction can be fetched 
while the previous one is decoded. So, this is one stage of pipeline. Each cycle performing as a specific task number of stages is called pipeline depth. So, already we have seen it has some, it has five uh, stages instruction fetch, instruction decode, execute, memory and write back. So, for one instruction say for one instruction we are doing we have already done instruction fetch and now for the second instruction say already it is fetched for first instruction then then it should be decoded it, it has the first instruction is already so for first instruction what we can tell when it is instruction fetch has already done it is over then it is instruction is decoded now the sec for the second instruction it can be a instruction fetch so when the first one is decoded that time the second one is being fetched so this is some overlapping uh, overlapping uh, overlapping of operation so this overlap of execution of instructions that is called the pipeline and every cycle performing a specific task or number of stages is called a pipeline depth. So, here actually this is a 5 tasks are there 5 stages. So, that is called the 5 here. So, so this is a uh, we have given here time scale the time um, axis as if this 1, 2, 3 up to 15 time steps we have shown and this is the 5 stages instruction fetch, instruction decode, execute, memory and write back. Similarly, this is for another instruction the again that 5 stage another 5 stage is kept. Now, see if it is a non pipeline that means for every instruction when the say the first this say if this is the uh, this is the first instructions then all the five stages uh, uh, should be executed and then only the second instruction can be in processed again unless the third instruction cannot start the processing unless the second one is finished. So, this is we can tell that the sequential execution of the instructions one by one the one instru instruction one first then instruction second then instruction third like that this is called a non pipeline. Now, the concept is as if the execution of one instruction that is being divide that is partition into 5 stages that fetch decode instruction fetch instruction decode execute memory and write back. Now, see that for the first instruction say this is for the uh, first instruction the instruction fetch is already it has been done. Now, the for the first instruction this is for the first the instruction instruction is being decoded. Now, when it is being decoded then the second instruction is already in processed processing stage. So, for the second instruction the instruction is being fetched. Now, at the third step means third time unit the instruction first instruction is being executed and then the second one is in instruction decode stage and that time already third is also in process the third instruction already is in process and now it is in instruction fetch. So, as if the first inst um, instruction is one time step 
in advance with respect to the second one. Again similarly, the second instruction said as if one time step in advance with respect to the third instruction set and so on. So, this is this overlapping say here uh, the second time st uh, time unit to the fifth time unit the first instructions and second instructions are being overlapped. Similarly, from third time unit to the sixth time unit the second instructions and the third instructions are in overlap and so on if there are more such instructions in queue. So, this is the concept of the pipeline pipeline architecture and this is being employed or utilized in RISC. So, if we see that uh, the actual architecture of this uh, uh, pipelining say these are here this is a uh, instruction fetch or instruction decode instruction decode and instruction uh, execute there is execute and memory and this memory and uh, write back so as if see if we if we just see that thing so as if here uh, here at second time stage these two are overlapped at so id instruction decode and instruction fetch Similarly, a third time step instruction decode and instruction execute and as if these are come here this is IDIF this is IDIF instruction decode instruction fetch. Similarly, at fourth time step memory and execute they are overlap and fifth time step that write back and memory they are overlap and see this four overlapping is also here IDIF, IDIF, EXID, execute ID, memory, execute, write back memory. So, actually there are four overlapping stage. Now, as if we are partitioning the at each uh, partitioning the time units and at each time units which stages are being overlapped. So, there are four overlap. And these overlap are being shown. This is IFID, the overlapping of fetch and decode, overlapping and decode, decode and execute, overlapping of execute memory, overlapping of memory and write back. So, see this is the um, program counter, so, some multiplexer is there this is instruction memory. So, from this instruction memory from this instruction memory instruction is being fetched and as the instruction is program counter is incremented by 1. Then it goes to some these are some register files. So, it goes to the after instruction fetch it goes to the decoding phase. So, instruction decode. Now, again uh, this is after after decoding that what type of execute operation it is. So, it will be execute that time that say memory is also from data memory the um, uh, data is being taken from the memory and then it is a write back that means again the uh, result is stored on the uh, memory or the data being updated on the memory. So, this is one stage. Now, when one instruction has uh, advanced one time step that means, the instruction decode then from the instruction memory. So, one this is the first instruction and now it has come here. Now, the second instruction is being fetched and then it is being 
so when it is being decoded then it is second one is second one is fetched so this is the overlapping region and in this way it will proceed for other instructions also now a pipeline with a multi cycle floating point operations say we are uh, the only the two stage we are considering say this is first we are this is a instruction fetch and say instruction decode now the two operations are shown here one is multiply a malt and here this is a this is a adder add addition so this is our execution mode ex this is the execution phase so the first instruction is fetched decode and it is being executed say it has a uh, multi cycle operations say for multiply we need m1 m2 3 4 5 6 so 7 cycles Similarly, for addition say there are 4 such cycles a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4. So, when one instruction will be in process that mean it will be in advance with one cycle then the next instructions can also be processed for these floating point operations. So, here actually these cycles or this can be a uh, pipelining stage for this floating point uh, operations. This is a multi cycle floating point operations. Now, here the data memory is accessed, this is a memory operation, and then it is a write back. So, this is one example of a, a pipeline with multi, multi cycle floating point operations. Now, there are some problems uh, associated with pipelines, normally we call that are hazards. Um, hazards are uh, mainly uh, these are some, uh, uh, some uh, problems to be tackled when we uh, employ, when we use the pipeline architecture. So, hazards are caused by conflicts between instructions which will lead to incorrect behavior if not fixed. So, these are some problems to be handled and as pipeline is a game that we are actually uh, re uh, employing the overlapping stretch. That means, when one um, particular instruction is in one stretch say inst uh, it is instruction decoding then the second one is started the its uh, fetching part. So, that is the uh, um, advantage we are giving that in this is some some there are some overlapping stretch. Now, for that there can be conflict because two instructions are processed parallelly at least two. There are some stages where the uh, instructions are say we have seen um, we have seen that here there are so this is a over, this is a overlapping stage this is a overlapping stage uh, where th three stages are actually overlapped 
first instruction is in execution, second instruction is in instru um, instruction decode stage, whereas the third instruction is in instruction fetch. Similarly, at the fourth time step also there are ex uh, overlapping of three stage. So, at the three, four, five time steps the these are say this is a three stage overlapping of overlapping of three stage. So, these time steps that means at three, four, five steps at three, four, five time steps or time units more than one instruction is in process. process either either fetch or decode or execute or memory and write back to different type of stages. So, what will happen that as more instructions are in process this is the main point. So, their instructions can access the same data or the same register value then what will happen? If parallelly that uh, more than one instructions access the same thing. So, the main problem or the main hazards means that this is the problem if more than one instructions uh, want to do the same thing. So, hazards are caused by conflicts between instructions it will lead to incorrect behavior if not fixed. So, normally there are three types of hazards, structural hazard, hazard, data hazard and the control hazard. Now, what do we mean by structural hazards? The two instructions use same hardware in the same cycle. This is called a resource conflicts. Say one memory port or unpipelined divider etcetera. Say one um, operation unit, say one um, uh, multiplier or one divider is there. Now, two instructions want to use or want to uh, employ the same uh, unit or say one memory cycle, same cycle. That means the same hardware unit. Uh, being requested or being uh, um, used by the two instructions parallelly at the same time, same cycle, then it is called a structural hazard. Now, data hazard, the two instructions use same data storage, register or memory, the data is stored either in register or in memory and two different instructions because they are in process and that is the concept of pipeline. So, the operations are such that both the instructions use the same data storage, then it is a data hazard. Now, the control hazard that one instruction affects which instruction is next. So, PC modifying instruction changes control flow of program. So, this is also a one type of uh, hazard called the control hazards. Now, how to handle the hazards? So, there are mainly uh, two things to be uh, implemented. One is force stalls or bubbles in the pipeline. So, if 
the first the intuitively what it thinks that if more than two instruction want to get the same resource hardware or data from the memory, then actually hazard comes. Then uh, what we can do? We can stall one. That means one will use that thing and one will uh, stop its using. Then hazards can be controlled. So these four stalls are bubbles in the pipeline. So stop some stop some younger instructions in the stage when hazard happen. That means as if the anyone say we are calling younger one that next one we, we just comes a letter that that instructions uh, accessing is be stopped whether it is a hardware or whether it is a uh, data resource from memory or register. Make younger instruction wait for older ones to complete. Again that stalling means that actually it will wait for some predefined time or it will wait for some time until the first one completes its use. Then in that way we can uh, handle the hazard and DSR right enable signals to pipeline registers. This is called the implementation. That means how it is being implemented the hazard handling hazards. Then it is some right enable signals to pipeline registers that in that way it can be implemented. Another is flash pipeline. So, blow instructions out of the pipeline. That means pipeline means some overlapping of some stages. So, if this hazard occurs that means just flash out as if one stage means one temporary uh, that uh, time units as if at that time unit uh, some of the instructions are being uh, thrown out. Refetch new instructions later solving control hazards. So, these instructions are again refetched and assert clear signals on pipeline registers. So, this is how it is being implemented uh, that clear signals on pipeline registers are being implemented just to uh, implement the flash pipeline concept. Just like the four stalls that it is DS write enable signals to the pipeline registers are implemented uh, to get the four stores bubbles in the pipeline. Now, we see how the structural hazards are uh, dealt. See that it is a stall, if it is a stall type, so it is simple low cost in hardware um, and decrease the IPC. Replicate the resource, so good for performance, increase hardware uh, and area used for cheap resources. So, replicate the resource because two uh, instructions parallelly want to use the same resource, but we have only one resource. So, one solution can be that replicate the resource. So, obviously, it will be very fast because there will be no hazard is control and the performance will also be good because parallelly or, or um, uh, at the same time both are um, both are using the resource. But replication means that it will increase the hardware and obviously hardware means it will be the increase the area, but speed wise it will be very good used for cheap resources. So, uh, it can be a good solution if for the if the hazard occurs for some um, cheap resources. Say that uh, now it is the um, uh, hardware same memory this is a very cheap one. 
So, if the two for some uh, instruction they want to use the same memory, then what we can do that we can replicate this one. So, this will be a good solution. Now, pipeline the resource, this is good for performance, complexity and again for uh, restricted RAM that only that RAM is there. So, it will be a good use. Useful for multi cycle resources, just now we have seen one uh, um, uh, multi cycle floating point uh, adder and uh, multiplier. So, for that type of uh, um, structure for that type of machines that uh, if two instructions want to use the same floating point unit and the hazard occurs, then if it as it is a multi cycle, then always what we can do is even that cycles that can be uh, um, pipelined. So, that for not only that overall pipeline concept that is this is a nested type of thing that for floating point units that whether it is a floating point multiplier, floating point adder as if the cycles are also pipelined between the resources, pipeline the resource as if these are the resource and it is pipeline between the two instructions. So, this can be the uh, solution. So, here actually we have shown that if this type of hardware is there that everyone is using that and then this can be easily can be pipeline. Now, the data hazards. So, two different instruction use the same storage locations. Data hazards means this is that either uh, same storage locations either for memory or the registers. Now, there are different cases we see. It must appear as if they executed in sequential order. So, two different instruction use the same storage locations. See one memory operation means always the memory operations are two only two. Already we have read the memory, the ROM, the RAM and we have seen actually there are two operations read and write. That means, only the memory is access or as it is accessing the cell as the data or the data is data is kept or stored. So, see this is uh, what we are seeing this is one, one type of. So, this is a add, add R 1, R 2, R 3. So, the registers values are added. The next instruction is subtract R 2, R 4, R 1. See here that both the content of see the R 1, R 2 are common, here R 1 and R 2 are common. So, and they are subtracted and then kept or R 1, R 6, R 3. See here it is a R 1 uh, add. So, first uh, the two values are read, the values are added and then it is kept. So, here it is a write is also there. Now, between this addition and subtraction 
actually it is a read re, uh, subtraction it the value will be read after this write that means in in subtract this instruction in subtract instruction there will be a write after a read operation in the add instruction so here the two instructions add and sub they use the same storage r1 and r2 now is there any conflict because both are using the same uh, storage r1 r2 the two registers but here subtract it is a read which was written in the first instruction add. So, this is a read after write we can tell this is a this is a read after write and this is a true dependence or real. So, there will be no problem no hazard here hazard is control. Now, next one say add r 1 or 2 or 3 and say this here r 1 this r 1 value was here. Now, r 2 is subtract r 2 r 4 r 1. So, that means here this is this is a this is a write after read because here also the r 1 r 2 are common resistors r 1 r 2 are common resistors and in the first instruction add the the value is read at 2 and that is being updated in the second instruction. So, this is a write after read and this is anti dependence. So, this is a artificial. Similarly, the third one say here add add r 1 r 2 r 3 subtract r 2 r 4 r 1 or r 1 r 6 r 3. So, here r 2 r 3 value that is added and kept in r 1 and again or r 6 r 3 is odd kept in r 1. So, r 1 is right after right that is in the first instruction and the third instruction add and odd. So, again this is a right after right this is also output dependence and this is artificial. Another one is there that is called the read after read. So, read after read as normally this is not a problem because unless we write something that it will be it will be of no it will not create any hazard. So, these are the uh, the part of data hazards. Now, the control hazards. So, this is a branch problem and branches are resolved in x stage. So, two cycles penalty. So, this is a branch problem and solutions are reduce branch penalty to so change the data path new add are needed in id stage the instruction decoded decode path fill branch delay with a useful instruction or fixed branch prediction or static branch prediction or dynamic branch prediction so using these solutions control hazards can be uh, handled um, so, mainly uh, in this class uh, what we have done we have uh, read the 
reduced instruction set architecture. We have seen that for uh, namely one pipeline operation can be uh, implemented that is a very big advantage, but for pipeline there can be some problems called the hazards, the structural data and control can be uh, there and how these hazards can be controlled that we have seen. So, uh, now the lecture 34 quiz uh, I am giving one uh, problem uh, already we have seen uh, that how it can be uh, designed. Actually, in the next class, we will see that how the, uh, the arithmetic logic unit uh, will perform the functions. So, actually, uh, in the next class, we will be seeing that uh, how the ALU can be designed. This is a part of a CPU design. So, we will end the class here. We are reading the design of computer instruction set and the CPU. In the last class, we have uh, seen that how the computer instruction set can be designed and the reduced instruction set uh, machines than uh, the current state of the art actually the all the machines nowadays are reduced instruction set. So, how are the instruction set are selected, how it can be designed how it is the, the what are the hardware implementation of it that already we have read. Today we will start discussion on the uh, design of CPU and first we will see the uh, design of ALU in this class. So, CPU contains three elements the resistors, the ALU the arithmetic logic unit and the control unit or CU. Now, already when we have uh, discussed we read the uh, different type of resistor designs, there we have seen the how ship resistors can be designed using flip flops. The barrel shifter or what we can tell that a this is actually a uh, more than 1 bit transfer that called the barrel shifter the 4 by 4 or 8 by 8 barrel shifter 16 by 16 how they can be designed already we have read that part. Now, the arithmetic logic units as it name implies the arithmetic units. So, it has actually two parts one is the ALU design, the arithmetic unit and arithmetic unit and the logic unit. Now, the